Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Buzz Kennington, Data Magnet, and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again, and now on to the story. Off Meta, written by Blashed. I hate this meta. Cal looked down at his world from the dust-colored ether that he inhabited. There was no way anything he made would compete with the system ladder, let alone the galactic ladder. Yeah, giant fish with teeth were cool, but they didn't win a space race. For the longest time, his fellow guards had been obsessed with the mag science strat. The idea went like this. Pour all of your resources in getting a race to space worthy in the shortest time possible, and that way you can dominate the early game with a magic arsenal. While it had the lead to a rather action-packed first billion years or two, the resulting stagnant mid-game felt like torture rather than fun. Each species was eventually matched to no ground, well, space, had been taken or given in years. It would turn into an eventual galaxy-wide collapse, with the winner being the one who survived until the heat death of the universe. Cal had never been a trend follower and had decided on trying to make cool species rather than meta-viable contenders. It was only after his latest batch had been obliterated by another player's asteroid that he decided enough was enough, and tried to late start a science-focused species. It was tearing the god apart, however. It felt so stale. You might be a dinosaur, Cal, said Ma, a friend but also fellow contender in the game. His species had hit FPL travel in the first billion years of play, and he now sat comfortable in the top 100 rank. Drop out while you still can. Cal turned his scrunched face to Ma. Well, neither of them really had faces, but he would have scowled if he had one. Just you wait, Carl said. I'm gonna make something so insanely busted, you'll have to drop out. Ma laughed and floated off, his essences moving through the dust-colored landscape towards another player. Carl felt his mood sour as he stared back down at his world. Then an idea formed. Slowly and sluggishly, it started to swirl around in his mind. A stupid, ridiculous idea that had no meritful basis for success. Cal's type of idea. Ma didn't necessarily enjoy the stage of the game, but he was good at it. The only game had been the best in his mind. His colonization space warfare tactics had been superior to most others and had landed him a comfortable spot in the Milky Way ladder. As with most, he had sacrificed dexterity, stamina, strength, and fortitude in exchange for an extra early points into intelligence and magic. Intelligence was for jump-starting the space race, and magic was for bending the rules. Supposedly, there were ways to obtain FTL travel, as well as advanced weaponry, by investing far enough into the physics skill tree. But it was considered a waste of time. Magic was weaker as a whole, but there was irrelevant... Anyone delving into physics would be too far behind the others and would succumb to magical space warfare. Magic was simply faster to obtain, so players would only go into physics tree for many space travel skills. All a species really needed to know from the physics tree was how to shoot things really high into their atmosphere. That game had been stressful rather than fun. Instead of colonization, it had turned into a cold war between top players with weaker players building forces and constantly raiding planets for resources and extra land. They would be swiftly beaten back, only for them to try it again, not even years later. None of the top players could do anything, though. If they so much as moved a toe into the weaker players' section, they would be dogpiled on by all other top players. A teeny, tiny hole would become a gaping maw in the defenses. So no one moved for thousands of millennia. Then, there were players like Carl who hadn't even achieved orbit in the last five billion years. He had spent too many resources diversifying species instead of specializing. Ma felt bad for him. They were friends after all, but Ma wanted to win this time. 
If Koss wins one more time, I might make myself material and blow my brains out. Ma lazily monitored his species' progress as they made reinforcements near the core of the galaxy in a system with several large planets. While direct control was possible, it was much easier to give loose guidelines to leaders and then focus on macro movements and evolution. His species' ships, along with most others, focused on magical space combat with limited ground forces. Arcane shields, missiles, and everything in between were usually controlled by large groups of warlocks aboard each ship. Planets were only needed for emergency landings and to show who had the most control. As he looked down from his elevated plane of existence, a sudden disturbance caught his attention. Near his newly mobilized core fleet was a swirling storm of lights and energy. Bolts of purple and red whipped out of its edges, Mark could see his core fleet growing worried. This wasn't a magical warp gate. There were no symbols or arcane signatures appearing near it. The fleet began maneuvering to face the unknown threat. Time seemed to stop. Mar held his equivalent of god breath. Space warped and bent, and in the blink of an eye, thousands upon thousands of monstrous warships leapt into existence. Mar felt sick. How had he not known about this force? With a shaking consciousness, he checked the newly found species stats. Shock rocked his mind. The invaders had subpar intelligence stats, but what really shook him was the magic ability and survivability stats. There was little to no magic in the entire race, and the fortitude, strength, dexterity, and stamina were all miles above other species. How in the heavens did a race even obtain spaceflight? He felt a presence behind him. Gull hovered behind him. Oh, hi, Ma, Gull said. Did you do this? Ma whispered. You know that ape species I was working on around 300,000 years ago? Ma tried to remember, but blanked. He hadn't paid much attention to each of Gull's crazy ideas. Is uh, that the one with the fins? Ma asked. No, the furry-tailed ones. Ah. So, um, I was thinking... What makes the magic tree so overpowered? Ma felt his presence shiver with confusion. He knew why, but what did it have to do with the war fleet in his space? It gives early game power in exchange for durability. But durability doesn't matter if everyone is dead. Cal nodded. Precisely. But, um, what if everyone wasn't dead? Ma looked at him stunned. What? Cal gave an equivalent of a smirk. Every time I had a species I thought it was neat, they would get wiped out by some player caused catastrophe. Not enough to obliterate the planet, mind you. They still wanted the victory points, but enough where it would wipe out my chances of playing. Ma couldn't tell where this was going. Did you steal someone else's work? No. But every time mass extinction happened, I was left with a tiny fraction of the population that survived. And since most players are stuck in a cold war, no one wanted to come over and mess with me if it meant cracking open their armor for someone else. And you know what happens if a species survives an extinction event? Ma was starting to catch on. They get a bonus to all physical attributes. You got it. And you know what that means. Ma felt his spirit drop. You don't even need to focus on magic. You just have to survive it. Gull was practically jumping through the dusk-colored landscape. Ma felt the pieces fall into place. And since they have increased durability, they can focus entirely on the physics tree, speeding up its progress. Ma's spirit sank lower and lower. Carl was practically singing with joy. And guess what magical defenses are weak against? Physical attacks. Ma was panicking. Its weakness was well-known fact. It was just that no one had ever made it very far with the physics build. A thought flashed through his mind and he felt a wave of relief return to him. Gal, my species has far greater intelligence. They'll simply outthink yours. He knew Gal wasn't well versed in space warfare. In fact, he was banking on it. Oh, Ma, that's the best part. Space tactics don't matter, Gal cackled. Open fire on one of them and see. Ma whipped back around to stare down at his feet and send a direct command to attack the intruders. Billions upon billions of calculations happened instantaneously as his forces worked. Cruisers and heavy assault frigates wound into complex structures. 
their moves and plans calculated to the nth degree. Battles were fought in a single flashy move with each fleet trying to outmaneuver each other, like a complex three-dimensional version of space chess. Ma was particularly fond of the maneuver phase. The enemy fleet remained still. That unnerved Ma. Ma commanded his fleet to fire. Glyphs and arcane signs blinked into existence across his ships, their circumferences dwarfing some of the cruisers themselves. Barrages of light and power began pouring from the fleet as all on board majors focused on the destructive energy. Carl's ecstatic attitude remained even as his species was being pummeled by magic weaponry. Something was wrong. Ma checked the enemy fleet for damage and felt his heart sink again. Damage was minimal and not present at all. The smaller cruisers of Ma's fleet having taken more damage than the larger destroyer and assault class ships. Oh boy, here it comes. I was hoping they would bring it, Cal whispered. A massive gravitational flux began warping space behind Cal's fleet. In a blink of an eye, a new arrival warped into view. Ma stared in shock. Cal, what is that? Cal's excitement left him near speechless. An extinction glass vessel. Ma's ethereal stomach dropped. It was easily the size of a mid-tier planet, just elongated and boxier. There was even moon-sized world ships orbiting it. Ma could see his own fleet panic. They scrambled into formation. At the end was clear. A single MAC from the massive ship, its ammunition the size of a moon, fired, and in a large span of a heartbeat, Mal's core fleet was gone. Mal could do nothing but stare in shock. I didn't even direct them to make all of this. They were nearly wiped out by another player's species, and they mobilized themselves, Cal said. Mal continued to stare at his disintegrated fleet. It didn't matter that his fleet had been one of the most advanced magical constructs in the game. It hadn't mattered that he was one of the best species strategists around. It had been like trying to win a boxing match by sitting in the corner playing chess. Him and Cal weren't even in the same game anymore. Cal's species wasn't better at Ma's game, it was better at everything else. Cal's smugness was practically tangible as he drew closer to Ma. Welcome to the humanity meta, bitch. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.